Open your mind to the way, the conscious way, the way of conscious mindfulness. Hey, and welcome to the way of conscious mindfulness. So firstly, what's this show all about and who the heck am I? Well, I am Sifu Boggy. Sifu means guide, someone, the muse, someone who helps you find that knowledge. And boggy means the balance between the chaos and the calmness. And for the last 36 years, I have been studying the Eastern arts uh, of Taoism, which means the way, the path, the balance, and studying Tai Chi, Qigong, also the barefoot doctor, which is someone who helps others heal themselves, and the dragon dog shaman, which was called the scientific magicians. And that's what I do. And this show, what's this show about? Well, the show, The Way of, the Con Way of Conscious Mindfulness, is a weekly Facebook and podcast show discussing spirituality and science, balancing health and well-being with mind, body and spirit, spirit, with a Taoist twist. What is the Tao? The Tao, as I said, means the way, the path, the balance. Now, surprise, surprise, we are not the normal talk show. Each week, we either have a guest or a subject. It's Sunday, so it's, it's subject time, and I've got some blooming cool uh co-hosts for tonight's show that i'm really looking forward to and our aim is to have an open discussion to help us all find new skills new techniques new ways to balance our very own personal dow or path so let's just give just do this and this and i'll bring them on so Good evening, guys. We'll start off with ladies first. So we'll start off with the wonderful Emily. Good evening, Emily. Good evening, Sifu E. How are you doing? Oh, I can't hear you. Emily, Emily, I can't hear you. Why can't I hear you? Don't tell me that me turning off your sound kicked you. What? Robbie? Wait a minute. You try... Wait. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's just Emily I can't hear. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have touched her sound. <laughs> yeah, she She's swearing at me in Russian. You just don't realise it right at this moment in time. So <laughs> oh, where's the camera? um i don't right okay let me just let me just drop you off for a second let's see if this works i'm going to drop you down back to here and then bring you back up again and see if that helps three two one good evening emily no <laughs> oh i don't believe it oh. right um can anybody else hear Emily, or is it just me and Robbie that can't? Anyway, okay, well, <laughs> Emily, try going out and coming back in, okay? And, um, <laughs> boog. So, Robbie, good evening, oh, sir. Good evening. How are you doing, my, my I'm brother? I'm doing grand. I'm doing grand. I'm glad you can hear me. I'm sorry we can't <laughs> hear Emily, but I'm sure she'll be back on in a second. Uh, I hope so. I, I think I think um, me turning off her mic wasn't a good thing after it wasn't all. Such a good idea, but you turned off mine as well, so I don't know. Maybe she when she comes back on. So, um, but yes, nice to be here. Nice to be back. Uh, yeah, back on the way of conscious mindfulness. It's always a pleasure to come on and and um, chat, and especially yes. talking about the Merkaba, one of my favourite subjects. Hey, hey, I know. Hey. Um, it's it, yeah i i know i know you love this this topic and uh i thought there had to there had to be a show sooner or later but the car yeah. be a show without you being on it that that was yeah. the point yeah so um yeah. Wanna... well good good yeah. yeah um so what what you've been up to how's the um obviously you've got a new book out we're just i'm just giving uh emily a couple more minutes to see if i can get her back but um um you've got a new book out how is that doing um, I have, I, I, I have. twin flames Merkabas, and more so you know <laughs> the, the <laughs> so it has to have a Merkaba in the title <laughs> but this is, the, this, is, 
It's the first book that I've written that you know all about because I've told you about it in many different <laughs> shows. In fact, while I was writing it, I think you got the whole narrative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think the first time you got the show, we got we got pretty much yeah, the whole book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's. I mean, it's basically. Uh, well, uh, the show about the book is next week, so I, I won't go too much into the book. But um, yeah, my life story, how I became a medium, how I met Angelina, um, you know, the synchronicities and the, the um, channelings that have led me to this path and ascension, what ascension is all about, what it really means. You know, what does that really mean to anybody? Do you know what I mean? So uh, what's the reality of it? It's all very well being all mystical and coming out with all these big mystical terms, but, you know, have we got our back? Yes! Do you hear it? Yes. Oh, we hear you. Hey, fantastic. Yes, I can join the party now. Hello, uh, welcome. Come on. welcome. Get that girl a beverage. Thank you so right, sorry. much. We've spoken about Robbie. He can shut up now. So Emily, I can hello, shut up, nice that's... <laughs> let me just say though, what a coincidence! Because I actually have the guy's book on my desk right now. Fantastic, fantastic, I, and that really is truly a synchronicity. I yeah. love that when life aligns itself that way. Ah, you didn't know that I was going to be on here tonight. Well, I didn't. Not until not until Steve Bogey called me up and said, "Hey, do you want to come join us?" And I was wow. like, "Well, considering I have his book on my desk, Fantastic. I'm going to say that to yes." Fantastic, perfect yes. synchronicity. Mm. I love Bogey it. Bogey works in mysterious ways. You should know about uh -huh. that. Way. Yeah, yeah. So, so for for those who don't know who you are, Emily, and and whoever they are, they've been living on the same planet I used to live on. Um, who are you and what what are you all about, firstly? Basically? My name is Emily Harrison, and I am the founder and director of the Akashic Academy. My area of expertise is in the Akashic Records. And just like many of you guys, my life is transforming very, very quickly. Um, in 2015, when it became undeniable that this was the direction my life was moving in, there were just too many synchronicities and too many... Um, downloads coming in, too many experiences that just verified uh, this energetic realm that exists all around us that we cannot see that is here to really assist us in this transformational experience of awakening our consciousness right now. For me, that's the Akashic Records. Uh, I left behind a career in Hollywood. I have a fun story. I'll give you like the most abridged version possible. I grew up small town, Missouri. Like 3,000 people, a little farm girl, right on the Mississippi River. I went to college. I was very restless in college. I quit college, packed up, moved to Hollywood to pursue acting. I did that for 20 years. I had a lot of fun and um, worked with a lot of really great, talented actors and directors. And ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, I was really struggling to be fulfilled in my life. I, the biggest acting job I was doing was on myself, trying to be happy trying to stay connected with my family and friends. But truthfully, I had just given away so much of my own personal power that there was a process of one, stepping back into and awakening my intuition that I needed to go through and really learning to love myself and understand who I was here on the planet. And when you do that, when you invest in that aspect of your own journey, you then begin to um, understand what your mission is here on the planet. Mine is to teach people about the Akashic Records because that is like the universal internet. Every single piece of knowledge that we could ever want is located in that space and every single person has the ability to access it. So I am transforming the world with my partner, Nick Pereira, uh, creating space to really bring this knowledge of the Akashic Records forward to create that space where we support our light workers in continuing to grow and expand. Um, we've created a network and a magazine and we are collaborating with so many amazing people out there to bring this message to the forefront and making it normal in everybody's lives. Because not everybody wakes up with their psychic abilities all intact and knowing what this intuitive thing means. Yes, there are some great guides on the planet who have done that. That was not me. My process, I, I had to wake up. I had to understand how to use it. And I had to start practicing it to get really good. So for those of, the, those of us out there who are moving through that process, we're creating that space to make it easy to have that connected community of support, collaboration. This is about the breakdown of the old comp competitive paradigms that are that are that hold up the matrix of the 3D and stepping into this idea of 
accessing the highest level of wisdom, coming together in collaboration, understanding our, our unique skills as light workers, and dropping the mic, throwing down something different as we step Dropping the, the mic. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Really fun. Totally. Fantastic. Yeah, no, you know, I, you know. I, I can drop a bow. Is that, is that close? <laughs> yes. yes. I dropped my phone. No, I better not. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. I'm going to drop right, the feather. So, yeah, oh, drop that. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and, and then have an airtight tube to see if the feather or the, what was it, a stone? Is it a feather anyway? The feather of the stone. Ah, the a pound thing, of feathers yeah. and a pound of bricks. That's yeah. the classic That's riddle. It. Yep. Yeah. Which yeah. yep, which is gonna hit the ground faster? A pound of feathers yeah. or a pound of bricks? Yeah, yeah which is heavier. You know I mean? yeah. That's right, that's right. Which yeah. is heavier? Right. Uh -huh. So anyway, let's get back to the actual this the subject just for once. Well, once. So uh, when me and Robbie start, you, you're actually doing a good good job, Emily, because normally when me and Robbie start, you got a no lot of fire, me. a lot of fire. <laughs> so you yeah, that's brilliant. That's actually you're in perfect company, actually, good. you know. And it's like that's all up. opened as well, you know, everything that's happening just now. The energetic expansion, the, the big lunar eclipse as well. The lion's gate opening as well. That's the second lunar eclipse. Another one in two weeks as well, and the, the, the lion's gate closing as well. Everything that's happening just now is seminal. It's been seminal many different points, but just now it's like there's a culmination of the people that are ready. So like yourself you're saying yourself, you know, you came to that point 2015, mm -hmm. you know, it's like there's a lot, there's a lot that are at that point of, well, this is it. This is happening now because the way that the energies are, it's much easier now to open your Merkaba. You've always been able to open your Merkaba. In fact, you're well your Merkaba's always open. Your toroidal field's always there. It's like you talk about the, the Akashic records. If it if it wasn't there, you couldn't you would you wouldn't be alive. So, but it's much easier now to open it. It's much easier now because as a collective, our minds are opening to this. Yes, it's like the, the hundreds mon hundredth monkey um, uh, syndrome. Do you know? What I mean? love that story. Yeah. Yes, I tell yeah. that story all the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's the it's the resonance of our mental energy that's opening, mm -hmm. and these different ways because there's many different ways to do it. There's many different ways up the mountain. Yes. But when you open your Merkaba, you know all about it. And that's, that's this point just now. And that's how you access the Akashic Records. That's how you access who you've been, who, you've got, who you can potentially be, and where you are right now. It's the center point, the zero point of everything. And it's very exciting. You know what I like? In your, in your, um, your wee thing in the background, your wee... Um, yes! It's like an abstract <laughs> flower of life. It's like an abstract flower of life. And the yes, flower of life... Is the is the energy of all creation that the yes. Makaba taps into? Yeah. So that's yes. you can't perfect. see it, Robert. You can't see it fully, but it's actually it's the seed of life. It's, it's the seed, seed of life. life. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. it's uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, I have it's, it's, there too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that is the and that is the that's the that's the that is the game template, and the Makaba is mm. your vehicle within that. Yeah. So the, so you can't have one without the other. So we are the Merkaba within the flower of life. So the, 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 the Merkaba is the vehicle to tap into the flower of life. So they're, so, they're, sorry. Okay. All right. I'm going to tell you something <laughs> fun about this. Sorry. Sorry. So this is a cross section of fully activated DNA. When our, active, our DNA is fully activated, this is what a cross-section of it looks like. And a really simple technique that you guys can use to start bringing that about in your own being, gaze into it. Print this out. Print the, flat, the seed of light. Put it up on your wall somewhere. Meditate on it. Because this is yeah. a really, really, really powerful symbol. And that's a very easy way that you guys can just start the process of awakening wherever you are and to like kick it up into high gear. Robbie, I love that you said that the Merkaba is the access point to the Akashic Records because I'll be really honest with you guys, that's not exactly the vocabulary that I use. But the cool thing is, is that I'm beginning to recognize all the different access points that there are to the Akashic Records because truthfully, the way that I was taught to access them was to say this prayer that rearranges the the energy of space and time and creates a light bridge basically to the records and then you travel to the records 
that's one way to get there. My way that they downloaded it through me is more of a reading of that or accessing it like through our DNA and through our heart portal space. But they've already told me there are so many different ways to access it. And truthfully, pretty much everybody on the planet is accessing them, whether they recognize it or not. But what I just opened up to in hearing you say that is the, the Merkaba, that's another access point for us. There's another access point for you guys in going into the Akashic yeah. Records. Yeah. 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 Now, and now well, I'm just trying to find system. it. Well, go on, Robert, you go first. Well, it's the information system of everything. Yeah. There's different, there's, it's like you say, there's different points of understanding of how to... There's, there's a million different traditions. And, yes. they're, and, they're, and they're all true within their own point of perspective. There's yes. it's just different ways of, like you say, accessing. It's different. The way that I um, was talking about it before was, you know, we, we, we can all have a washing machine and it works in many different ways, but in each country will have their own set of, of mm -hmm. um, instructions, one in Japanese, one in Chinese, one in, you know, there's many different ways of being told how to use it. But it's mm -hmm. the same mechanism. It's the same, It's what we are. And coming into our oneness, like each different Zen master, you know, you see, you have a Zen master that cut off your finger to bring you into awareness. That's a point to bring them completely into their self, which sounds like a bit of a ridiculous story. But <laughs> you understand the point of awareness, the point of oneness, the point of presence within that story. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what the the Markaba does as well, because it brings you into that point. But it's not just it, it, each different point of access to that is still bringing you into your Merkaba. That's why it's so ubiquitous. That's why that shape yes. is so ubiquitous. And it's also the, the intensity of, it's like, it's like different points of how you are prepared to access the, access yes. the intensity of who you really are. Yes. And at the point of fully opening the Merkaba, the oneness is it's indescribable, really, because that's that, the mind of the oneness, the mind of God, mm -hmm. the mind of being. That's when, that's when I'm you and you're me. And we are all, you have that point of, of experience mm -hmm. of being all levels at all times and not be yourself anymore because that finite point that it can be quite scary at one point but you you moving forward through that into the bliss transcends everything you know and that's that point that's that's it's very powerful the most powerful thing you know? i love that you said too that it's necessary for us all to learn to tap into our Merkabas, our own fields, to learn how to work with our own energy because we all need to have our own experience with getting that information coming exactly. in. Um, it's really great that we show up and learn from each other. And this is a very dynamic part of how we're supporting each other and growing right now is showing up and sharing from each of our own individual perspectives how the energy is coming through. But it's very important. I f almost feel like it's it's a requirement of us as light workers. We're being called tap in and get your own information. Yes. And then start sharing it and comparing it and seeing like seeing how all these pieces fit together. So I really like that that you that that was part of your the first part of your message too about tap in so you can know. So you can know what you need it to know. It has to be experiential, yes. exactly. It has exactly. to be, yes. It's like that old story about the elephant and one ant's on the tail and they're describing the tail and one ant's on the tusk and they're describing the tusk. But nobody's actually seen the whole elephant. So we're like Got that. It. But our consciousness, yeah. what, the deeper we go, because it's, it's about what we're ready for as well. What you put, yes. if, you're re if you're ready to recognize you are, you know, not everybody's ready to, to completely let go of their personal identity. Do you know what I mean? So it's about, it's not about that. It's about, first of all, the, the first point, because the Merkaba has so many different layers and yes. levels, right? So the first layer is fundamentals. It's balancing out what is our chakra system, what is our energy system, what, mm -hmm. what habits are bad for us, what habits are good for us, and us coming into that point of balance first. Before yeah, I don't think we want to let go of everything at once. Yeah, exactly. Before you go into being, yes. you know, a Maha avatar, and, you know, and start yeah. manifesting things from nothing, the first point is about us being, being calm within ourselves, 
being in our peace. That's got to be the first place it's coming into our peace and recognizing, well, what has worked for my life so far and what do I not want to happen and what do I want to happen? The fundamentals of that beginning, everything else springs from that. And that's the point, the center point, because the Merkaba is the two triangles, basically, or the two, um, the toroidal fields, right? Exactly, that shape. The, the one going downwards is the, is the, is the, the earthly, right? And the one going upwards is the etheric. So it's everything that is not physical and everything that is physical. And that center point has to be the balance for us fundamentally before we go any further. Because mm -hmm. yes, you can open up and yes, you can levitate. And yes, you can move into different dimensions and do all of the different stuff that comes with the city powers of that expansion. But you need to first, that's why when the, my guides talk about the ring pass knot, right? which is a kind of valve. It's like a point. It's like there's different points that you're ready for. Mm -hmm. And if you've not dealt with your greed or your lust or your laziness or your, you know, whatever it is that you need to deal with, you, you'll deal with those fundamentals first and come into balance before you can move to the next stage. And that valve is there. And that's, that can't be crossed by, yes. you know, by, by uh, some ritual or some you know, incantation. It can only be crossed when your consciousness is ready for it. And that's mm -hmm. the power of the Merkaba because it won't let you go any further. It won't because people that try to open up too far too fast can create like a psychosis. Or yes. can go, you know, it's like oh, I am everything, and then what you know, and it's that, oh, and that's a wonder. It's a wonderful experience, but it can only go so far as when you're ready for it. When you're yes. you're using those protocols, basically. I love it. Literally, the, anything that I can share with you guys about the Akashic Records and how they work is exactly the same. The Akashic Records are designed to work to bring forward the highest good that you are ready to understand, to implement, to shift at that point in time. So there's always room to grow and expand, but they're not going to go too fast. Because there is that such thing as that, psych that, uh, that psychosis. You hear people talk about having kundalini awakenings where they just blow, their circuits get blown. Yeah. And truthfully, this isn't the most dynamic way for us to move through the process that quickly. Um, we, our focus in our society for a long time has been a very instant gratification kind of paradigm. So I get why we all want to do that really, really quickly. But the truth is there are so many different layers of lessons to learn as you go. And I also agree with what you said. You've got to deal with those things first, those areas where, you're, where you've got greed or lust or whatever it is that you ha haven't neutralized, you have not karmically um, brought into oneness and, and fully loved yourself and forgiven yeah. yourself for. You know, the, the, yes, the, the, the specific vocabulary that I use in terms of like that, that those gateways that get unlocked, the portal is through self-love. How much cosmic information you can assimilate does not have to do with how intelligent you are. It has to do with how much you're willing to love yourself. And in order to love ourselves, we have to neutralize all of these areas where we've carried density. We're also being called to clear our ancestral lines so that the future generations that are coming in are working from a cleaner slate. Like it's time to really neutralize this karma because in 5D, we're not creating karma. We're working with different, different systems up there, right? And really learning to understand who we are, why we've chosen this circumstances that we've chosen here on the planet for our own learning and growth. When you examine those things through the space of the Akashic Records, which is zero judgment and unconditional love. So they're not telling you how bad you are for doing all that stuff you did. Exactly. They're showing you the dynamic blueprint of how this all works together. And when you can see that and understand that the self healing and self love, that transformational process that you go through brings you the vibrational frequency to access and use this space to its highest ability. But you definitely have to go through that layer of healing that and that cleansing first. Yeah, yeah. yeah they got me cleansing. That was, cleansing's been my mm -hmm. life since 2003, really. You know, it's, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, you read the book. 
actually. It tells you all about um, the process that I had to go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically, <laughs> like, half of it's my life story and half of it's, like, about ascension, you know? But, and a lot of it's channel, too. you got a lot of cool channel stuff in here. Well, well, the, that, well the book is basically, it's, it's my, the journey that I went through to become a medium and snippets of the, like I've channeled four books, uh, Metatron, this is the clarion call, Metatron, this is the healing book, the Galactic Council books one and two, and it just shows you the process that I went through and what I had, they wouldn't give, they actually wouldn't give me a word of it until I'd fasted for 20 days, the the first book. So I had, I was wow. in day 20, day 20 when cool. they, when they gave me the, when I got the first, um, well that was, uh, eight years ago now, um, the first, um, the Clarion Call book. Um, but it's the process through that, you know. And it's not about, I think the terms are important because when we say cleansing, I think because religion has said, you're bad, you're bad, you have to, you know, all this stuff. It's not cleansing in that way. It's not saying you're cleansing, you're, you need to cleanse away that your badness. It's about you getting you clearing your filter system to the point where you can access the purest point of who you really are that's all it is and it's and, and if you can if, if you see it from that perspective there is no judgment there is no fear there is no you know guilt or or, or shame or anything that kind of traditional religion has relied on to control us it's not like that at all it's nothing like that in fact it brings you into such a place of feeling like as if you're supporting the higher energies, it's such a place of unconditional love. You do until you're in that place and you recognize, oh, he just wants me to feel better. They, she, they just want me to feel better. Do you know what I mean? Like um, you come into the place where you start flowering as a heart, mm -hmm. and your heart intelligence opens up. And like you say, yes. it is, it's about love. It's and the more that you love yourself, the more you love everybody else because the truth of everybody else is yourself. So it's, it's, yes. it's the point of detachment. When you say detachment, what do you mean? I'm not meant to care about anybody. Well, everybody is you. So when you detach from the illusion, you're actually, it's the greatest form of spiritual attachment because you yes. detach from the illusion and you attach onto the divine and then all you feel is love. And then everything that you're capable of. All you feel of, is love. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm singing. I'm singing my way out because I have to go, gentlemen. I'm so sorry to cut oh, you. Oh, you go. I have another interview. I have another interview. Uh, well, I have to run to. But, uh, um, it's been such a pleasure. Lovely having you. Yes. Well, if you get the book read by next week. <laughs> okay, that's my, right, you guys. My, if well, you read the book by next week, you get to join a special little program. Yeah, so that's yeah, my goal. Oh, yeah, only because it's just specifically about the book, right? Yes. <laughs> um, on the seventh, on the seventh um, yes. of August. So, if you're, you're free, on. Emily, you can come yes. on the show on the seventh. If you're free as a co-host, if you if you read the book, it's only 130 pages. Um, so, but oh, yeah, they're getting book. me good. Okay, everybody, hold go space. Go for me. I'm going to get this book read. Blessings for your for your other interview. Thank you for coming on. Thank Wonderful so talking much. to you. Wonderful See you guys again too. Yeah. Bye bye. See you later, see you for Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so um I was I've been trying to actually bring on um because the, there's a picture quite important. I'm sorry, I was just getting like I, I did pray before I came on and I've just um been blathering on there. <laughs> no, mate. Don't worry. It was good. It was it was good to. I, I knew Emily was only about for half an hour, so yeah. uh, I was quite happy for her, her to for you two to uh, converse. Um, right. It's so with the, right. So with the with the Taoist stuff is um, the, there is the whole thing that the flower of life. There's that way. If you actually make the uh, Metatron's cube, the the, the Merkaba, yes. but with seventy four pyramids, it's actually seventy four pyramids. I'm dead. I was been trying to actually so I could bring it on as a picture, but it won't load up for some reason. But there is there is a picture. I will uh -huh. uh, put it into the comments. Um, there is a picture where you can where you have this what metal frame of the of the Metatron's cube, which is seventy um um not seventy four six. 64, 64 pyramids, 64 mm -hmm. pyramids. And when you shine a light through it, you get the flower of life. And the reason that you get the flower of life coming through is that according to, because I mean, it's it's up in the corner here, it's behind me, 
over here, over there. Um, the flower life is the mother. The, in, in, in the according to the ancient knowledge I was taught, the flower life represents the mother energy of everything. Not, not, not just not just you know like like say guy of the planet, but it is the yin. It is the mother. So crop time, the old Tai Chi symbol. The flower life would be the mother. The Merkaba is is the father the merkaba yes. is activate you have to activate your merkaba yes. yes. your flower life is continuously flowing because yes. it is the creation it's the mother but by activating the merkaba you get you know um it's the activation of the merkaba that tr helps transcend you and yes. the interesting thing interesting thing within um the Taoist stuff and what i've i've learned is that when people talk about astral traveling and they talk about the silver cord is mm -hmm. that according to the, the the knowledge i know is that the, the silver cord is like being on your bicycle and you just cycling from your from your house you can only go so far and you have to come back yes but the the macabre is your whole body it's like your house being a motorhome and you can take your whole home with yes. you wherever you want to go in the world yes and and, and so in the the ancient culture the macabre this is why um the, the whole point of the star of david you know the 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 the, the um the uh, old testament and the the jewish symbol the star of david is a triangle point down triangle pointed up it's a 2d macabre a 2d pyramid Yes. 2d pyramid and it was said in the in the old testament they talk about day said david was the only uh the only saint that transcended to heaven while still alive and he was picked up by the macabre which they also then described as a chariot and they picked up and was and then was uh, went to to heaven transcended to heaven via the macabre yeah um and, and now there, there's another interesting thing on that is there's been sightings of UFOs that looked like macabres. So you was talking about one pyramid pointing up, one pyramid pointing down, spinning opposite directions. Well, that's um, what, that's what happens when you when you fully activate your macabre field. That's that is what happens, right? So yeah. as you as you when you when it when you say activated you it's all it's always activated in everybody right you, you you can't have a toroidal field you can't be you can't exist without a toroidal field right so so it's, it's always there it's about it's about whether you whether you you choose to um, use it to travel or to to um, transcend your problems or to um, help you expand your your capabilities but as you fire it up if you like right and there are many different kinds of techniques. There's many different um, ways to tap into the the energy. There's your there's your your wand of light. Yeah. <laughs> when so you the, when you do that, that, the metaphor of the macabre is you cut like you say the macabre is there. You, your trigger field is always flowing. The macabre oh. is 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 there, but it's when you activate it, you really set you you bring the light. Yeah, yeah. But when but when that really when that happens as an experience your dynamic toroidal field go, go, it goes from being like that it kind of looks like that right so you're in the middle and it's always flowing it's always flowing out that side and out that side right it's always like an apple right it's always like that it's a torus right it's a toroidal field but when you when you fully activate your markaba and you when you have the experience of it opening you you come into the oneness but the 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 shape of it is a, it's a UFO. So when you when you are when you are traveling or when you are using it, when you're at that point where you understand that it's a real vehicle and it's not just it's not just, there's different levels of it, right? So it can bring you into peace. It can help you. Like we were talking about with Emily, you know, the fundamentals of it is bringing you into balance as far as your your lower self is concerned, or all the things that can the seven deadly sins, the things that can that can impede your peace, right? But when, but when you take it to the next step of moving forward through the, um, the ring pass knot and you, you activate it fully, that's what it looks like. It looks like a UFO, and that's how some of these sightings aren't, aren't just you know, people from other worlds. They are people who have activated their Merkabas and that are traveling within their Merkabas. 
things. And sometimes that can be seen, sometimes it can be caught in camera, or sometimes it can just be seen with your third eye or with your, your sight, do you know what I mean? And you can see people who have transcended, people who have gotten to the to um, to transcend the dimensions. So so that's that's part of part of what when we look at think about this little green men, it's actually just people that have been sitting in meditation. And part of them, their physical self is sitting in their living rooms like that. Home. <laughs> <laughs> and another part of them is traveling and is uh, you know, in different places on the earth or different places in, in, in different dimensions or different planets or, you know, whatever. And just now it's being it's being open because energetically, according to uh, my guides, according to the Galactic Council, according to um, the way that I have been given the information, in 2012, when we were brought that um, idea that, uh, uh, you know, it's the end of the world, it's not that it's the end of the world, it was the, the end of the world as we know it, but as far as the galactic brotherhood or the uh, the, the wider cosmic um, observational part of our existence is concerned, our what they talk about is our quarantine. Like we have gotten to the point in our, our, our spiritual evolution where our physical existence can be obliterated by ourselves through the technologies that we've developed and through our, our, our point of evolution. But also, from the, in the good side and the, the better side, as you could look at it from a common sense point of view, we are ready for, for a transcended collective instead of what we've had before. You know, so it's been, it's kind of like tipped a little bit to the side of the light rather than the side of the dark. So, so the, we're, we're able to, as a collective now, tap into the, the, the bigger part of us and ascend as a, as a deeper collective, you know? And that's why all of these things are breaking down. The, 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 um, you know, the different systems of government are being questioned and who's in charge and the 1% and who's hiding secrets from who and who's that benefiting and what's, you know, why, are, why is there still people starving in the world when we've got all this food? Why is, do you know what I mean? And why, why are we not in control of all of this? Do you know what I mean? And people are just waking up. What works? You know, healthiness, happiness, meditation, you know, different money systems breaking down, cryptocurrency, you know, like everything opening up, you know, which is wonderful. That's great. You know, it's, it's fantastic, you know. Sorry, I'm blathering on here. No, so. it's all good, brother. It's all good. It's all about it. That's, what, that's the whole point. I mean, the interesting thing, for, again, I know that the um, when we go back to 2012, there was a big hype. Uh, from the media about um, the end of the world. Yes. But there was a lot of media who knew for a fact, they knew that the Mayans were saying, hold up, no, this is just a calendar. There's another seven after it. You know, you know, so how can it be? Well, you know, why would our ancestors make another seven calendars if this was the last one? You know, don't exactly. be silly. Exactly. Uh, you know, and but it was, it was the whole point of um, a very important time. Yes. And that very important time is the age of Aquarius. And the whole point, we're actually moving into the age of Aquarius. And science, as you know, I love bringing in the science. Science is, is saying that what people forget, pe people have got into this mindset that our sun sits in the middle and everything rotates around it. And that's that's not a true representation of, of, of our solar system. Our, so, our sun is hurtling through space traveling with all the other stars in the galaxy and as they're traveling all the all the planets are chasing after the sun so it's like a spiraling effect for starters but it also means that our sun is our solar system is slowly like a record for those who remember records or a a sun a sundial slowly moving across the space, the vastness of space. And science knows it has been saying it for the past 20 years. They've sort of been keeping it quiet, but they've been saying for the last 20 years that this space that we're traveling through, especially since 2012, this space has it's starting to in it's the intensity of the air energy is increasing everything. It's affecting the planets, it's affecting the sun. That's why the sun's been changing. You know, like as kids, we draw yellow suns. Why is the sun white now? 
you know, and everybody sort of tends to, you know, I'm not talking about dawn and dusk. I'm talking about the rest of the day. When you draw a sun, when you was a kid and you draw a sun, it was yellow. Why is it white? Because energy, the energy that's hitting it is changing it. This is why it's, you look at the... Um, the the you study the the uh the sun news the sunscapes of uh you know all that information what they're looking at there's big things happening in the sun there's big things happening in the in this on, on the planets now nasa admitted it and now kept it quiet everybody talks about global global warming but every single nasa admitted eight years ago that every single planet is heating up and is being affected so Hold up. Are we firing all our fridges uh, and all our CF gases that to, to Mars, Uranus and everywhere else? Because because why is every planet being affected? That doesn't make sense unless it's not internal. I'm not saying that we haven't affected um, the, well, the we planet. We definitely but... have and we still are. Definitely, definitely. But there's definitely part of um, everything opening up. But it's even like talking about science as well. I think that's very important to talk about science. Because of, science has become like religion became, and so, like they're 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 very fixed in their views as far as constants is concerned. It's funny there was a TED talk and it was talking about the um, the constants that aren't constant, and there's the big thing in science, like the uh, was it nineteen twenty the. the it was a band TED talk anyway, and it's a chap that was talking about how they measure the speed of light, and the speed of light changed um, but as far as the way that they measured it between um, a couple of decades. And they, what they said was, uh, why is that a constant now? And it's like, basically, well, we got together and we fudged things so that we, we agree on what a certain speed. But what that means is that there are no constants. A lot that, a lot that is accepted as being a constant and we can't look any further or we can't we can't look at that things are changing it's actually a nonsense and part of that i think is to do with economics i think part of that is to do with economics because of the it's like um talking about what's his name that uh oh i talk about him in the book as well um the um the chap that that um talks about the pyramids um uh, oh um uh, Graham, Hancock, Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock. Yeah, talking about you know um, the what what uh, you know traditional uh, archaeology has said about you know the what what we can see on the earth doesn't really make sense as far as their timeline is concerned. It's a nonsense. It's like anybody just a five year old looking at it would say that's just not true. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of that is to do with economics, to do with people having a job and having a certain narrative that they have to stick to or they'll lose their job. And they're not prepared to go out without the, the parameters of the, of the accepted narrative. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's, but that's all changing because, yeah. we're, because of just it's an expansion of consciousness. So well, science, uh, science is basically the the is is us looking at stuff, testing stuff out to see what it does, and then coming to conclusions about it. Mm -hmm. Full stop. That's it, and that mm -hmm. always changes because there's always there's always more accurate measuring devices. There's always a, a different way of looking at things and different calculations. It's always changing. That's the big constant that should be accepted in science instead of the constants that are agreed upon by people who don't want to lose their jobs. Yeah, uh, I mean, so so much here. I mean, for starters, pyramids. There's over 130. When I went to China, I saw, I personally saw, a lot of them are government uh, protected. You can't, you can't go anywhere near them. And I sort of had permission, or I, I had people I knew I was allowed to, one or two of them. But there are over 130 pyramids in China that I know of. I think there's more than that. I think it's 138. China's a big blooming place for starters. Yes. But there's, and they go from Giza pyramids. To, to Mayan style. I mean, you know, we go back 20 years, there was only one place that had pyramids, and that was Egypt. Now, through the internet, we're learning more and more and more that actually there's these other places, which, which again, it, it doesn't make sense. If we're all individual places, or we were originally one race that just spread over and then we created different cultures, it, why have we got pyramids, similar pyramids in different places? Why have we got um, uh, hieroglyphs in Australia? 
when Australia was, you know, at that time, they should nobody is supposed to be being in Australia, yeah. apart, apart from the the the, uh, uh, the 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 Aboriginals. Um, exactly. And that's just what that's just one thing. I mean, the David Wilcox. So Graham Hancock, great guy. Look him up. David Wilcox, great guy. Look him up. Um, in David Wilcox, there is Russian scientists that have been doing experiments looking at that the fabric of space, the actual fabric, and they've said the fabric of space has a pattern, and that pattern is three quarters of one of your favourite things. It's three quarters yeah, of yeah, 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 and, the, and one the pattern exactly. Actually, yeah, and that's, you that's another it? way. Yeah, exactly. That's another way that when you activate your Merkaba, that's how the first thing that you experience is the oneness of everything. So wow. as you experience the oneness of everything, then you're able to travel within the oneness of everything. And it's and that is it's interdimensional, but it's also interspatial. That's when we talk about bilocating and being able to, do you know what I mean? Being able to um, to see things from a distance, or being able to sense when something's going to happen, or see a scene happening, walking in a room and then seeing that scene happening, like deja deja what vu. Is, what they call it, deja vu. You're tapping into the reality that you're choosing to walk through. The, what the Taoists like, like say, like, like, like the, da the Taoists again, the Taoist culture. You actually go the, there is actually a similar culture or or, or an offspread of them that came um, to, went to Tibet. There's an offshoot that went to um, that that was found in Egypt. But the interesting thing when you go to Egypt, well. I spoke to certain scholars in Egypt. I spoke to people in China, spoke to people in Tibet, spoke to people in India. Um, and there was this big thing about this one culture that once there was one civilization and they're talking about, I mean, it, um, Tim, the great Tim Wilde, we've had him on the show. He always talks that, uh, that Atlantis was the first time we were physical. According to these guys, we we were before that, but you know, it, you know, it, it is whatever it is, and also multidimensional. We could be in another dimension that that point. But according to these guys, that Atlantis was actually one of the later civilizations that yes. they'd already that's split what, up. According, yeah, that's what the like the Galactic Council talk about that as well. They say that this is the seventh experiment of a batch of humans incarnating and evolving. So so we have been humans on, on this planet before and, and we have evolved and one of them was Atlantis, one of them, you know, Lemuria and these different, like all of these ancient sites that you're talking about as well, you know, um, the, there is a ring that goes right around the world of these ancient sites. It's within 100 miles of, of each other that are, that's all the way around the world. That and part and the these ancient sites have been found to be built on even more ancient sites that were there long, long, long before you know, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, 200,000 years ago. So that's a that's even a different line of evolution, do you know what I mean? So we well, have been know, here before, sorry. you know, in the UK, sorry, brother, you know, in the UK, that all the churches, a lot of the churches are in line, and the reason they're in line is that they're on ley lines. But the reason they're on ley lines is not because the Christians built them on ley lines, they took over the the pagan sites and the druid sites mm -hmm. and built their churches. So it was the druids that knew their ley lines. Now, very, very quickly, the interesting thing with the druids and the pagans, being a Taoist, studying Taoism, and then um, having a uh, good, good friend, one of my one of my students, who's a teacher for my school, Bas Chilia, uh, he, he's a pagan, and um, studying the pagan philosophy, I was seeing symbols and the n not not exact language, but the the information they were talking about was parallel was was parallel with the information from from Taoism, but and from other bits I would learned in Sanskrit as well. So it's like this all came from the same place. This all went out. It's not like picked up in an individual thing as such but it's all come out but the whole thing of oneness is that if everything is one then or the whole thing with with emily and the Kashic records um is everything is one that means all that information is it is downloadable and exactly. the only reason we, exactly the only, the only reason we don't think it is because we've told that's nonsense because science or religion said it was evil and even religion's an interesting fact that be pre 1400s um you had purgatory 
which is a tunnel. You went through karma. You went through a tunnel and then you could either go to go and be one with God or you could go back on earth. So they think heaven, uh, heaven and hell was introduced in the 1400s. And also they what well, they took out was reincarnation and they took out this whole thing of oneness. Because when you translate the Old Testament of God created man in his own image. I've had a, a Hebrew expert say, that's not what he says. And, and so, OK, so, you know, translate it for me. It says, and this is this is why it says that, because what it actually says is God created everything in its own image. Well, you know, that's an oxymoron. How can everything be in the image of God unless everything is God. God exactly, and that's exactly that's perfect. Yeah, but if the, but when there's when there is a when there is a especially um, deep philosophical or spiritual truth, right? So what happens is somebody has an experience and brings a truth to a certain point. If that consciousness is not ready to assimilate that truth, and they're still dealing with their lower selves they will use that as a control mechanism, which is what we did to ourselves. We say, oh, religion did this, they, they did that, that, they did that, but that's us. <laughs> that, that's our fledgling consciousness that's not ready for the assimilation of oneness, so we use that in control methods, you know what I mean? To control the populace or to control, and, and part of that's, that's fair enough, when we're not ready to assimilate it, we will only assimilate it to the point that we're ready for. That's the whole point of the ring pass knot. So we assimilate to the point where control and the people who are meant to be looking after our, our spiritual needs or, you know, how we, we organize ourselves, our moral systems, or, you know, how, how we organize our society. And that has its place and that has had its place. And it's important to honor that for what it is. But it's just like right now in the, mic in the microcosm of that, of that understanding from the last 20 years, nobody is really wanting to use a Sega Mega Drive anymore because that is def that's there's it's not current they wouldn't want they might do it you know just to, to <laughs> just for old time's sake but generally they are on their their new technology and and once you recognize and develop and rec and understand that you that you have something that works better uh, you're not going to go back to the old system that's all that is, that is. and that's it's happening just now with all the religions all the way that's breaking down it's because us coming to the recognition of these are old traditions that have worked to a certain degree but they're not working anymore and the more that we become aware of ourselves aware that they're is a Merkaba, that there is these systems that we can tap into that makes us function better, why wouldn't we? Why mm. wouldn't we? That makes us happier, that makes us more balanced, that makes us not just be able to deal with our lower selves, but be able to transcend the dimensions consciously and experientially. Why wouldn't you? you know, that, why wouldn't you? Basically. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so let's go through a few of these uh, messages. So, ah, Sonia, the lovely, the lovely Sonia Adams says, ah, love, love you all for what you bring uh, to our covers. Thank you very much. Love you, Sonia. Uh, Thank you. This was obviously about when we were, we talked about uh, Emily Cifui's um, oh, Cedar okay. Life. So it says, uh, well, I, I bought a Cedar Life uh, pendant last week. I saw it in a meditation. Yeah, the all, all sacred geometry. Yeah. All, all sacred geometry, all symbols are actually free. Well, more than three D. They're, they you know, you can move them around. That's one of the things in the Taoist concept, like you know, like this. It we see it as a two D, but I've actually got pendant, and the pendant shows it protruding. And the whole point is because it's actually a sphere, you know, and and you know, like a. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, yeah you can just sort of see it. It's actually, um, but that's another but thing. Everything. Yeah. The 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 Tao the, the the yin yang in its three dimensional um, uh, presentation is actually a torus. Mm. The, 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 the 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 yin yang the torus is it's a it's a torus. It's actually yeah it, that is actually a three dimensional 
um, it's a torus. What we've been talking about, the to the 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 torus field that's around us that expands with the Merkaba. That's what that is. So that's uh, yeah. and it's it's part of the same system. It's part of the same yeah, thing. As, and just part of the whole as above, so below. And exactly. I just wanted to say about the, the Merkaba. For me, with the Merkaba, is that when you've got the Merkaba working. The, the, the word shun means to flow, but it also means to fold. And in the dragon dogs, they actually talked about folding space. Where you saying about, you know, like they're up in space and they're sitting down. Is, is that yeah. the, the whole point that they can be in two places or several places all at once? Because the, the illusion of reality, we think time is linear. So therefore, you know, it starts here and it falls. Oh. It starts here and it goes over there, but and we think the same with space. But what there, the Taoist perception, which is now quantum physics, is that actually, according to the way that space works, everywhere is touching everything else, and it's only the fact that we don't know how to get from one yet. level exactly. to the other. Well, well, science doesn't know how to get from one. Not level yet, to not yet, yeah. But we didn't know how to split the arm like a hundred years ago. You know what I mean? Uh, exactly. So I mean, really, this is uh, we are we are we are at the fledgling point of that technology coming into being a reality and. Holding space time, it's like saying, "Well, how how can how can in the vastness of space where we where we are, how can, how is it possible for us to go? Because we know how big the universe is. It's like the Fermi paradox about why do we not see um, you know um, other intelligent life? And the answer to that really is, well, it's so big. It said takes uh, even going at the speed of light." The, it would take years and years and years and years to get to anywhere that would that is another sun that would have um, supporting um, physical life. But when but when it is folding dimensional space, it's instantaneous. So that's when we see these crafts, and it's like it doesn't it defies the laws of physics as we understand them. But that's only because of our lack of understanding of the expand. But the greatest of scientists are basically saying it. It's that it's real. That's that is that is what it is. That is how it is. And it's only right. just about us catching up with that, really. Uh, yeah, and that's what that's right, what so Michael says in the, the clarion call as well. Sorry. No, it's, it's all right, brother. It's all right, we. We're fine. Keep going. Um, so, um, yeah, so this is uh, Ma Maxine. Maxine, actually, Maxine, her husband, is Baz Chilia, my, my student who's who's ah. a Sifu as well. And Maxine is actually, um, I'm her Reiki master as well. So she's a, a, a big she's a big part of the, the, the family. And she, I actually haven't got the shirt on today, but she, their band Sprigger Mist, the mighty ah, Sprigger cool. Mist. Ah, cool. um, so so her, question, uh, her question was, our DNA is who we are. Therefore, the mer the Merkaba, Merkaba is all but we do not have as though we all belong. Why do you think that is? Well, it's it's, it's because we all belong, but we're also we're also having a subjective experience. So so when we're, we're meant to not belong, we're meant to have a, an experience of not belonging so that we can come back to our oneness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're all we're, we're just having an experience of separation. It's not real, and it's and even though it's we can look at it from our behavior, it's like why are they acting like that? That's not very spiritual, you know. Some of them, the, some of the people who have the greatest spiritual understanding don't act very spiritual because they they deliberately take themselves apart because they're working interdimensionally and they don't want they don't they don't they have their, their time is spent expanding things on a different level as well and so and there's many different ways of looking at it yeah and uh, any good sifu should never take themselves too seriously yeah. because if you if you take it you if you're taking too seriously you're missing the point and that's like looking at the end of your nose and not looking where you're about to trip over or what exactly. you're about to walk into. Exactly, exactly. And having a and you're here for the experience. Yeah, exactly. You know, and 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 we all have the the point of having to come back and, and just well, it's wonderful anyway. It's a wonderful experience. Just being totally. here is a wonderful experience. And the more that you appreciate that, the more that you accept that, the more that you revel in the what how wonderful creation is or however you quantify it yourself but you're just you're having an experience of you 
But to answer her question, I think that's what it is. You know, really, we're, we're having that subjective experience. So even though we all belong to each other, we all are each other, really. We're, we're, we've given ourselves a subjective experience so that, we can, so that we can have the experience of being crabby or being at war or being in love or being... You can't be in love if you're being in love with yourself. You, know, you have to have an experience of separation in order to find yourself, in order to find your other half, in order to... It's like romance, drama, you know, like the, the Shakespearean, um, you know, uh, comedy, tragedy, you know, history of our lives of everything can't happen without that separation. Yeah. So a dialogue we talk about, um, two-dimensional, <laughs> it's a bit two-dimensional, but two-dimensional is also an experience, it also has its worth, because that's the whole point of it, is us having experience. The truth of, of that is like saying, what is the ultimate truth of everything? There is, there is no inherent meaning apart from the meaning we ascribe to it. So we are here to give meaning to life and we are here to come back to ourselves. We're here to come back to our belonging of who we really are, you know? So, Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, how are you with time? We've got a few more little things here. You, you need to go soon or are you all right? And are we well? Are we on an hour? Is it an hour? What are we yeah, doing? Yeah, it's been, been an hour. But uh, I've got, if you're if you right for about another five more minutes. Yeah, have we answered all through. the questions? I don't no, worry about it. no. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get through them. So, okay. um, then, uh, another one of my students, she said, um, the support is amazing. She also yeah. said, um, I see that chaos, uh, chaos often in people starting to awaken. Yep, that's that's the classic sign. Well, when people start awaken, they start feeling they're going crazy, or they start, you know, everything starts falling apart. And it's it's the hero's journey. Um, I always forget who who wrote it. Uh, where's Where's Ethan when you need him? Uh, the the hero's journey is a great book that talks about you know about this that, that things have to unravel for them to actually fall into place or fall apart to fall into place. Um, Sonia yes, also exactly. says, and that, but that's the whole Taro thing as well, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. The hero's journey from the beginning to all the 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 different facets of our human experience. Indeed, brother. Indeed, brother. Indeed. Right. So uh, says yes, reaching the point of inner peace and accepting what happens to us and not being fearful that's a very key point Sonia um I had to take a step back to work on this but have come through this and feel I have moved forward to the next step it's a, it's a circle just remember it's a circle you you may feel there may be a time where you feel a dip there may be a time where you feel uncertainty and, you know, and that's just another level of clearance, you know, is is like, you know, there's this big thing in um, um, in enlightenment when when people will like, you know, say, oh, I reach enlightenment. And, you know, there's all ah, all fairy dust and everything. Um, but the Japanese talk about enlightenment. They say he was sweeping the floor, making uh, doing his um, crop, um, do, doing his garden, making his food, cooking his food, meditating doing his exercise and then one day he reached the lighterman the next day he cleaned the floor he did his food he he, he did the garden and he did his meditation a lighterman is just always just steps there's always next um or the other way of um yeah the other corny way of saying it is um um have you reached a lighterman how do you know are you still here yes well no you haven't then because because when you're enlightened you'll no longer be, you'll have evolved back into the Tao, the universe itself um but as one of my sifu says i've done that it's boring there that's why i, I prefer coming back here and there's well, that's the, this whole, the whole point of the bodhisattva vow. well the whole point in existence is it's not it's not just about knowing that you are it's about choosing where you need to be or where you want to be it's about Indeed. having more choice also, you know? And the more that you do or the more that you trust, you you come into a deeper point of trust, I think. That's the whole thing as well, you know? The more that you open up to it, yeah. 
Mm. So, um, Michelle says, this is cool. Uh, I've been working on opening up the Merkaba. Yeah, it's, it's uh, this guy's a great, a great guy to learn from. Um, there are Qigong, surprise, surprise, that I know that I, I can always teach uh, a different way. You won't ever want a different flavor. There are Qigongs I know and, and different empowerments, but this guy's a great one. His books are awesome. Um, you know, plug, plug, plug. Um, and then we got Kelly Bear. Here She's saying go. yes. Uh, Kelly Bear or Bear and working, she says, I, I work with you. these. Wow, and says, I do Metatronia, so I do that. So, um, and any more, let's just have a say, Kelly, it's all, yeah, I'll put the Kelly, it's all good. Michelle's put, yeah, Sonny's put, loving it. Um, ah, oh, maybe, um, so. Vanna but powerful evolution going on here. There are two beautiful beings spreading infinite knowledge. What a blessing. Where? Ah. Where? Where? Where are they? Where? Are they? Where? Where? I can't see them. <laughs> Never take yourself too seriously. But thank you. Yes. Oh. 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 <laughs> Um, there, it goes back to the it go it goes back it goes back to the old saying your 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 great poem that's on the uh, the way of uh, the way of learning that it says oh, about the, the I am the do yeah? yeah 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 and and there's there's a version of that saying um, I am the saint and I am I am the poo that is on the saint's foot you know that that he's <laughs> yeah. he's treading while on his journey you know is he, yeah. that the yeah. you know the, the truth the Tao is everything it, it, it's the chi yeah. and the char um yeah. very very quickly it also says um i try to explain my family the awakening is nothing to fear i feel this is a problem for many and i see them suffering because of this yes um a lot of people will be afraid but that's the whole point of the light workers that's the whole point of us is yes. that you know is shit spreading that love um exactly. I, I, I mean i'm I, my my point of view is i've awakened to the point where as a Taoist, um, I believe, you know, you live and die over and over again. So if you kill me, no big deal. I'll come back. It doesn't matter. But, you yeah. know, the, the whole point is, is that everything is internal. You know, think of it like, like this. You know, your body is made from ancient stars. That's how awesome this universe is. You know, your body is made from ancient stars. And Einstein, you know, if you're very much a scientist, Einstein said energy can't be de destroyed. It only can be transferred or transformed. It can't, energy can't be destroyed. It can only be transformed. Your consciousness is energy. So therefore, you cannot die. But anyway, well, you cannot work. die. That's another thing that um, they talk about in, the, in that book as well. And um, Twin Flames, Macabas, and more. Because I'm like, you know, I want to, like, talking about ETs and, the, you know, like all the crafts landing. And I'm like, oh, I, I want this to happen before I die. And the guides are like, well, you can't die. <laughs> you'll, have many, you'll have many more experiences of dying, but that's all there'll be is experiences. You know, and it's like, yeah. and and in one way, it's like, you know, yeah, what fantastic. And then the human side of us is like, yeah, but I mean, this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that that's the whole thing of like Taoist alchemy, and you know, in the Taoism is is this whole point of that you can technically make yourself immortal, and this whole, but the well, the Taoists when they talk about the macabre and the and the flower of life or the terrestrial field is that you activate them, then you. The immortality, you get to choose what you stay as. And then, you know, you get most, they talk about that most cultures, they grow in longevity. So they start going to 100 years, 200 years average, three, four, five. Um, the Book of Enoch, which is supposed to be written by, um, by, by uh, Noah's grandfather, the Book of Enoch, Enoch is said to have been 900 years old. There are people in the Bhagavad Gita and, you know, the, the Hindu scripts that were a couple of thousand years old. So the, the whole thing of, you know, length and time, science itself says we're actually not living as long as we should, that 
the science well, itself is talks saying. about the anti-galactic council as well. Part of yeah. the limit, the limiting energy of our of our, the 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 scripts that that we have believed in, like three score and ten, right? Three score and ten. Where it says in the Bible, you will live three score and ten, and that average was an average for a long time, and it can st still, you know, at that point. But like you say, science is saying, well, there's no reason for us to be at that point. But because there's a belief system, because we believe, well, if you believe, it's like saying, like when people work in life and then they retire, they say that word retirement actually makes you feel older. And they, people start deteriorating or feeling bad because they don't feel like they've got any purpose or they don't feel like, like oh, I'm getting old now, I'm getting old now. And, oh, three score ten, there you go. Because that's their belief system. That's their, their, They've had that ingrained in them, so they believe that, so they make that happen. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that's come from them believing a text that wasn't, isn't actually accurate, isn't real. But it's just it's a question. point of limitation. Sorry. Sorry, no, 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 no. It's just because I know you've got to go and you, you're like me, you'll keep talking. Um, yeah. Last question. So the last question is from Banner and it says, do either of you believe our lives have already been written or are we creating it as we go? Your question. Well, we're, we're a mixture of two. I think we're, I think we're, I think we have, we have, um, we have decided on a certain script, but it's dependent upon our vibration. And the, the Galactic Council say basically that that's basically what it, what it is as well. It's like when we when our lives are have been written, if we ascribe to to the plan that has been set down for us by other people, and and that's from our society, from our um, religious texts, from our wh whatever it is, you know, that, that people think of you or want of you or, or prescribe to you as your best path forward. When you take when you take yourself back, and I believe, well, why do I believe that? That's that's actually my dad's. That's my uncles. That's my pals. That's my societies. That's my religions. When you take yourself back from believing in that script, when you believing in that point of your life being written for you, you free yourself up to create it more within yourself. You're always creating it as you go, you know, as far as your vibration is concerned, like the law of attraction, the understanding of our thoughts create things. But what are we thinking? And who who put that thought in there? Is that from our own volition or is that from somebody else? And you come to a greater point of creation or of, of what you want to happen in your life when that's what we were talking about earlier about cleansing. The cleansing is really a cleansing of belief systems to the zero point where you're actually creating from your own creativity, from, well, what can I do? There's a certain point of your of prescription that's there that you can't do anything about. You can't do. I can't do anything about the fact that I'm the height that I am. That I'm a guy that's. Do you know what I mean? I can't do anything about my the physical circumstances that I've got. But I can do something about the fitness of it. I can do something about you know the health of it. I can do something about the career, the creativity, the you know whatever it is that I want to do. My relationships. You have massive control. So I think these things, with especially with the Merkaba. It brings you into a deeper point of control from what you really want to do, from not what's prescribed to you from society or your, you know, and those things can be great. That could be your, your highest potential, but you need to really think whether you really agree with that or not. And if you do agree with that, that's fine. That's great. You're going. But if you don't and you want a different life for yourself, you can create something different. You can create something better and you change your vibration and you bring that into being. And you can, you really can. And the more that you open up your your your, your uh, Merkaba, and here's the biggest point about the Merkaba, right? The Merkaba helps you embody unconditional love. So the love of the divine God, whatever you want to call it, right? It is everything, that created everything. The, the, at the highest point of you walking with your Merkaba opening, at that point of unconditional love, there is nothing that you cannot create. And the script that you write is infinitely more powerful when you, when you do that. That's, why, that's part of why 
I am so compelled and urged to help people understand that they even have a Merkaba because it's that very question. Have our lives been written? Is, is, is the point where, because the, it's, it's society as well, you know what I mean? There is such a thing as, you know, as, as um, societal manipulation. What we believe is our fate, what we, are, we, we think we can achieve or cannot achieve or should do or should not do or whatever parameters that have been powers that be, if you like, right, that are not quite as powerful as we give them the belief in or the Illuminati or whatever you want to call it, do you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever, whatever points of control our consciousness on the, the, the um, negative side has created is infinitely more powerful on the flip side when we empower ourselves, when we open up our toroidal field, when we access the Akashic records, when we bring ourselves into enlightenment, when we open our Merkabas. And that's the biggest thing. That's the, that's the most exciting thing to me because it's not just about transcendent dimensions or, you know, having your, you know, being able to bilocate or being able to instantly, um, you know, it's about being happy. It's about your. It's about your purpose. It's about your. Your being happy in the moment. And the more that you're happy in the moment, the more that you're at bliss in the moment. The easier it is to create, and the easier it is for you to write the script of your life. And that's that's what that's what we're moving into now. A, a more expanded point of us being aware of our ability to create the life that we really want to have, and the and the conscious. Um, the conscious friendships and relationships and you know uh, harmony that that is needed is needed for the next stage of our of our ascension our evolution yeah yeah, yeah. run over <laughs> <laughs> and, and and as as Sifu Po would say and breathe <laughs> indeed. <laughs> And let the chi flow and let the char go. Um, right, so guys, we as you can tell, we've had a freaking awesome time. We've loved it. I don't know about you lot, but um, we thought it was cool. Uh, yes, indeed. Freedom, indeed. Mm. Freedom! But uh, don't, Freedom! Don't, get, don't get Robbie started. Whatever you do, don't get him started. <laughs> so, um, when, no. I, <laughs> I'm I'm half I, I'm half Irish, half Russian. I'm no threat whatsoever. So, um, but uh, anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, Robbie. Obviously, just give us a couple of minutes, um, guys. Take care. We have so Robbie's show is on the seventh. So we'll be talking about Robbie's book on the seventh, and yeah. um, really looking forward to that one. A bit of new book. Yeah, that new book. Um, so if you can, well, actually, I'll get Robbie to I'll give me the link or or when you look on the on the show, stick the comment, stick the link to your to get your book down yeah. below on the comments. Yeah. And uh, we'll do that. And we'll see you guys soon. There is a show next Sunday. I think there is. Um, I can't think off the top of my head. I've been running around a bit like a madman, sort, sorting out a few things. And I've just managed to keep the computer going without it melting, um, which because it's starting to heat up here in the UK. But um, so take care, guys. I uh, hope to see you again soon. It Thanks is. Oh yeah, indeed. Uh, thanks for joining us, Nassas. Us, us, the the, 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 the the two the two the two uh, the the two dangerous brothers. Um, so, but anyway, we, we hope you enjoyed it. So, take care, love, she and Shen from the mighty Robbie McKenzie, uh, and for myself, Super Boggy. 